The Forza Horizon series. The Forza Horizon series has evolved so much from since its inception. From a simple arcade street racer with an open world, to a vast collection and celebration of all things automotive. The Forza Horizon series has always been one of the best racing series on the Xbox console. And in this video, I'm here to talk about my personal favorite game in the series, Forza Horizon 2. Forza Horizon 2 was the game that introduced me not only to Xbox, but to Forza as a whole. So a lot of what I'm going to say in this video is going to be from that perspective. I have a lot of very strong memories of Forza Horizon 2, which might influence me in some way. But in this video, I'm going to be pointing out why I think Forza Horizon 2 is the last true Horizon game. Now you might be thinking, that's a bit of a bold statement the last true Horizon game, but hear me out. Forza Horizon 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 feel like two separate pairs and almost like they're different series. While Forza Horizon 1 and 2 focus on starting off from nothing and having to really work your way up to be able to earn high-end cars and be able to build your collection by working really hard for everything, Horizon 3 and 4 seem to almost hand you everything in a way. They focus more on the quantity of having many, many, many cars and all of these cars and houses and everything all into one game and in a very accessible package in which the latter games in the series, you don't have to work as hard and to be able to get things in the game. These are both excellent solutions for what makes a good racing game. But in my opinion, the first two games seem to have a special, almost more realistic feel to them. Let's start off by talking about the progression and story in Forza Horizon 2. Forza Horizon 2 starts off pretty much the same way as Forza Horizon 1 did. You start off as a newcomer to the Horizon Festival, and by competing in events and championships, you have to work your way up all the way up to a final event in which you race to become the Forza Horizon Champion. Forza Horizon 3 and 4 take a different approach. Horizon 3 has you build up a festival across Australia and keep going and going and going. And there's no real super final conclusion. It's just once you got all the festivals upgraded and all of that. And Horizon 4, well, that one doesn't even really have a conclusion. But go back to the story of Horizon 2 quickly. Horizon 2 takes a slightly different approach from even Horizon 1, as for those people who are more casual players, they just want to race cars, they're not super interested in a story, Horizon 2 is pretty good for this because it doesn't throw cutscenes at you and unnecessarily dialogue. What it'll do is it'll gently introduce you to characters, but it's up to you whether or not you actually care about them or not. 99% of the game is just you racing against other drivers. One of the big differences that the first two games have in compared to the third and fourth games is that they're more grounded in realism. Take the Horizon Festival itself, for example. Forza Horizon 1 and 2 are pretty realistic in terms of you could kind of see it happening, you know, if you stretch your mind a little bit. But 3 and 4 go into festival scenarios that wouldn't even make sense, especially 4. Some of the scenarios that just would not even be close to possible in real life. The original two games also had something interesting to them, which was, in my opinion, they had a really good sense of personality and a purpose to the game. They had so much more character than the third and fourth game in the series, and it really did make you want to just keep playing the games. Even to this day, I still hop on Forza Horizon 2 just to mess around with cars. And I'm going to go much more in depth into what makes this game so special to me. Let's start off by talking about some of the engine sounds in Forza Horizon 2. This was a complaint about many people about some of the more recent games in the series, about how they were becoming more generic and using less unique engine sounds in the series. And to prove this point, I've recorded three cars. On each of the cars, I've recorded them in Forza Horizon 2 and also in Forza Horizon 4. So, without further ado, let's take a listen to these engine sounds.
Now, if it wasn't immediately obvious, Forza Horizon 2 tends to have a more unique sound for each vehicle, but also in terms of tone, it seems to have a more smoother, natural approach in terms of engine sound and sound design in general. Whereas Forza Horizon 2 goes for a bit more of a brash, aggressive tone on a lot of the vehicles, which they're great in each aspect, but I kind of personally prefer the more neutral, smooth, balanced approach that Forza Horizon 2 takes towards the engine sounds in-game. I feel like, especially for cars like the BMW M4, it gives it a more natural, true-to-real-life sound rather than Forza Horizon 4 where it's just screaming at you. But again, personally, I prefer Forza Horizon 2s. Now, a big part of the reason why I love Forza Horizon 2 so much over the more recent entries in the series is because of the map. Forza Horizon 2 has an absolutely fantastic and beautiful map. While sure, it lacks a lot of the diversity in terrains and atmosphere that you get in Forza Horizon 3, the location is so unbelievably stunning that it makes up for it. Having that Southern European, Italy and France setting is absolutely perfect for being able to live out your dreams in incredible driving roads in your favorite cars. You have these incredible locations like Nice, which is the largest city, almost city area in the game, which is kind of the central hub for street racing and all of that. You have Sisteron, which is also relatively similar to Nice in design, but it's more northern in the map and has a different atmosphere to it. Little more hills and elevation changes, but it's still a very excellent setting. You then have down at the southeast of the map, you have Castelletto, which is excellent for coastline views and absolutely stunning sights. You then have up at the northeast, you have Montalino. This area has lots of long, high speed back roads and again, some more dirt settings too. So for more rally racing. In the center of the map, you have San Giovanni, which is more of an old school Italian kind of town setting. It really is a really great place to just cruise along at low speeds and enjoy the sights, especially at nighttime. You also have some more unique locations such as the dockyard, which you could spend hours upon hours learning different drift routes and how to drift your favorite cars. It is a perfect spot for drifting. And if you remember the heyday of Forza Horizon 2, there was even that little drag strip section almost at the end that a lot of people would use in multiplayer racing. You also have, in my opinion, the best airport in a Horizon game to date, which is the Aerodrome up at the north of the map. I feel like this one was really special in terms of online drag racing and roll racing. I remember spending so much time roll racing with my friends. You also have locations like the golf course, which are great if you want to just mess around in trucks and off-roaders, and they're perfect for that. The castle up by Montalino is another example of a really just interesting design. It also has that old school feel to it. And you can even go underneath the castle and there's a little kind of basement section there. It's really interesting. And then also one of my personal favorite things about the map is it has some of the best highways that have been featured in a Forza Horizon game to date. Forza Horizon 3 also had fantastic highway designs. But something about Horizon 4, just the way the highway feels, it doesn't quite hit the same as in Horizon 2 and 3. By far, my favorite part of this entire map is the coastline road from Castelletto to Nice. This is by far my favorite section of the map as all it is is beautiful coastline scenery and beautiful mountain twisty roads and you can just lose yourself you know, doing that back and forth in your favorite dream cars. It truly is one of Horizon 2's greatest spots. So let's talk about some of the features that Forza Horizon 2 brought to the franchise. First off, it was the first Horizon game to have bucket list events, which was a great addition as it was the introduction to more side activities apart from just doing the main races. You can have some fun little challenges like taking a Koenigsegg and having to hit a certain speed. Little things like this are little great additions as it'll distract you a little bit from the main kind of story aspect of the game, but still giving you that fun challenge to do. Horizon 2 also had the first map expansion in a Forza Horizon game with Storm Island, 
While unfortunately the DLC for Horizon 2 isn't purchasable anymore, Horizon 2's Storm Island was still an amazing addition when it was still available. And then of course, who could forget the Fast and Furious expansion? This is one of the best tie-ins that the Forza series has had with another brand. Compared to say Hot Wheels and Lego, I think Fast and Furious was the best done version of this. It used the base game's map, well most of it, but you had unique UI and new features like Nitrous that you could use and it was really an inventive way to have a brand tie-in but also having an incredibly fun aspect of the game. Another thing in terms of gameplay that Forza Horizon 2 added was the ability to tune your vehicles. This was a big thing that was missing from the original Horizon game. In the original one, you kind of just had to, when you would upgrade your cars, you would have to deal with whatever gear ratios and suspension tuning that the, the game would give you. But in Horizon 2, it started the blueprint from the motorsport games, and this carried on into the later Horizon games in the series, with being able to completely adjust everything from your tire pressure to gear ratios, suspension tuning, all of that, it was really good to have that introduced in Forza Horizon 2. While I understand that the more recent Horizon games have been focusing more on celebrating cars themselves and not focusing as much on some of the little story aspects and little gameplay things that the older games did so well at, I still have such fond memories of the older Horizon games and they're the ones that I think highly of compared to some of the newer ones. And again, I totally understand if you like the newer stuff more, but hey, I personally enjoy this one, and if you personally enjoy that, we are free to disagree. So that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more Forza Horizon content. Forza Horizon 5 looks like it's going to be revealed at E3 this year, so be sure to stay tuned at my channel for it because I might be live streaming the E3 as well. So if you're interested in that, please be sure to stay tuned to the channel for more updates and things like that. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.